Welcome back. Thought I'd do a couple quick examples for you to see how we can use this knowledge of asymptotes and rational functions to solve some problems. So we'll start off with this one, um, similar to ones in your book. We've got the function right here that's defined, and we want to go ahead and do the following things. We want to find the domain, the vertical asymptote, and the horizontal asymptote. We're going to need to use our books. Um, looking at page uh, 144 to remember some of those rules of asymptotes, so it's important that we have that and we refer to that. So we'll go ahead and start here. Um, we need to look and see uh, the domain of f. The domain of f is going to be a problem only where this denominator is zero. So let's go ahead and find where this denominator is zero. If we take, we want to know where negative 4x cubed plus 5 equals zero. So if we go ahead and solve that, we're going to have x cubed equals uh, 5 fourths. And you go ahead and simplify that. So x is going to equal the cube root of 5 fourths, whatever that is, some ugly number. Um, that's when it equals 0. We actually don't want it to equal 0, so that's our domain. The domain is anything but x cannot equal three, uh, the cube root of 5 fourths. We've got to make sure that the cube root of 5 fourths isn't in the numerator. So if we go ahead and plug that into our calculator, a simple little calculator, I'm going to take the cube root of 5 fourths cubed is 5 fourths. So that's 3 times 5 divided by 4. And that gives me 3.75 plus, well, we're only going to be adding here. So if I were to really just kind of think about this, I know it's not going to be 0. Because now we're going to take the cube root of 5 fourths squared and multiply that by 7 and add 2. All those are going to be positive numbers, so we're only going to have positives in the numerator. It's not going to be 0. So I can go ahead and stop here. I don't really care what the numerator is at, at the cube root of 5 fourths. I just know it's going to be positive. So we have a positive over net, uh, 0. So that's the only problem we have. And that is the domain. All right. Now let's identify the vertical asymptotes. We'll do that in a different color. Um, let's do that in uh, red here. The vertical asymptote of f. So the vertical asymptote is where this thing is zero. So the vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals the cube root of five fourths. we go ahead and look at that, that's the vertical asymptote, and that's the line we have. Now for horizontal, um, the horizontal asymptote, we have to remember what it says. Now the degrees here are the same. If you look back on page 144, under number 2, it says if n is equal to m, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the graph of f has to find the leading coefficients y equals the leading coefficients divided by themselves, so the numerator divided by the bottom there. So that's the case we have here, because those are the same degree. So y equals 3 over negative 4, or we have negative 3 fourths. Okay? And we can go ahead and let's take a look at a graph really quick. So we'll go ahead and graph this. And take a look and see if we have those asymptotes. In fact, what I'll do first is I'll graph those asymptotes, and then we'll see if it actually uses those. So if we look at the asymptotes of x equals the cube root of 5 fourths, that's the first line, x equals the cube root of 5 fourths. I'm going to use my knowledge of cube roots and powers, and that's the one third power because that makes it easiest to graph. So there's that number, cube root of 5 fourths, looks like about 1.08. And then we have our horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 3 fourths. So if y equals negative 3 fourths, there's our asymptotes. I'm going to make these fancy for us so we can see them. Uh, I thought we liked that color. Let's just go ahead. So those are our asymptotes. We now can go ahead and graph f of x. So if we graph f of x, f of x equals the numerator of 3x cubed plus 7x squared plus 2 divided by negative 
4x cubed plus 5. And sure enough, we have acid base here effectively. If we go across that one there, we come down close over here, and we're looking at exactly what we have on the, we identify the correct acid base. So I'll go ahead and put this in your notes. And Now, I, I suggest pausing this video and seeing if you could try this one on your own. Exact same directions. Um, the problem's different, but we have the same directions. So go ahead and see if you can do that. Take a minute. All right, I hope you have the answer. Just see what you come up with now. So we'll go ahead and look at the domain. The domain is when this thing is negative. So I got a saw, or zero. So we don't want that to be zero. So I want x squared plus one to not equal zero. And x squared does not equal to negative 1. That's never going to happen in the real, so all real numbers is our domain. The domain is all real numbers because we have this x minus 1 can't be anything squared. So we have part A done. Part B. So we have part B, we can look at it one second. All right, so if we go ahead and look at this, we can see what the vertical asymptote is. It's when this is zero. Since that's never zero, there's going to be no vertical asymptote. We're going to look at uh, whether or not. All right, this is just like the other one. The vertical or the horizontal asymptote is going to be the leading coefficients because we have the same degree in the numerator and the denominator. So this is going to be y equals three. And if we take a minute and graph this, we just modify our other graph. We have uh, we had x didn't have any and. The y was at 3. So we'll put a y at 3. And we'll look at the x. And then we'll go ahead and graph this. Changing f of x to f of x equals 3x squared minus 7 plus x minus 5 divided by x squared plus 1. And if we look at this, we truly do have this graph is flat out horizontal asymptote. Now this is a little bit interesting. Let's take a look over here. This is something I've been meaning to point out. <clears throat> it crosses the asymptote. But if you remember the definition of an asymptote, it just accepts it. Um, <clears throat> crosses, it approaches at the end point. So this one does come to it. And if we go ahead and find it, this can find the intersection of asymptote here. And we do have a point there, 8 comma 3, where it does go to 3. You can plug in 8 or plug in 8 and you'll get 3 out of out of this and it works. And we said the asymptote was 3, but it approaches it at the end point. So something good to remember for quizzes, tests, that it does it, asymptotes can be crossed, they just can't be crossed at the end. At the end is where they go and are and look at to cross to approach, but not to cross. So this one comes out and approaches it infinitely close. Up here it goes up, but then at some point it's curving back infinitely close, but never going to be three again. So good things to know. Let's go ahead and move on. We have this last one. Again, I'd take a moment, pause this, and see if you could try it. Again, same directions, setting the broken record. This one does look a little different, though, because of the degrees, but go ahead and take a minute. All right, hopefully you've come up with some answers. Come up with the domain. The domain, I should spell it. The domain here is where this thing is negative. So, uh, right so if we have this domain here, we can look at x squared minus 4. We don't want that to equal 0, which means x squared 
can't equal 4, and x can't equal plus or minus 2. Convenient help with those perfect squares. You just put them in both sides, and you got that, plus or minus 2. So there's our domain. Our domain is x is not equal to negative or positive 2. And then if we go to part b, we can start to look at um, the vertical asymptote. And part b should be very easy now because we know that the denominator is here, so our vertical asymptotes are x equals positive 2 and negative 2 because that's where the denominator goes to 0. And then part c, we're going to look at, I'm hoping you see how quick this is starting to come, but part c, we'll look and see <coughs> that the horizontal asymptote is, now we have to look here carefully, because now the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So if we go ahead and look at our page 144, you have memorized, if the numerator is smaller than the denominator, then you know that there are no horizontal asymptotes. Or that's our abbreviation. So we have that. We know there's none. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and just verify that what we found. Um, we can look at this. So we are going to, first of all, we'll get rid of this. Turn our, our x back on. We need two x's. We'll make x, one of them negative 2. And we'll make this x equals positive 2. And negative 2. And then we'll change the function to be 4x plus 4 divided by x squared minus 4. And we'll take a look at this. And what do we have? Lots of fun stuff going on. We'll do this more on how to graph these later. But there are three regions, and each region out of 10 points approaches these graphs. That's pretty neat. Something I failed to not notice here is this does factor in the numerator. It could have pulled out a 4 to get x plus 1. It didn't help us any, so that's probably why I didn't do it. But um, if we were to factor both of them, we should probably check that it doesn't um, cancel anything out. And truly, we don't. So we have x plus 2, x minus 2. So we don't cancel anything out. <clears throat> it's good to check. Make sure we don't have that. So 